So good evening, everyone. So I'll share my screen. Uh, I'll show you the topics what we are going to discuss today. Uh, since students they requested for VRF, so we will do a VRF lab today. And apart from that, uh, we are doing one more uh, BGP discovery lab. Uh, so we are using a route reflector for it. So let me start this. Uh, let me fire up this uh, lab. Okay, so what we are going to achieve on uh, this topology, I'll give a glimpse and then we'll jump into the practical right away. <clears throat> so um, I would say this is uh, um, this is most of the engineers, even they have uh, 10 to 12 layers of experience and they are implementing this BGP. Then uh, I found this, uh, this is a kind of a difficulty. I would say uh, the people, they struggle to do this. Um, because here we are going to look about exactly uh, the complete uh, interworking of uh, IBGP and EBGP and how do I use that and how the route reflector helps. And also we'll go through uh, what is the use of next stop self and uh, also we'll see how this EBGP neighborship happens. We did this in the lab, but um, this discovery lab is something we are using a multi-hop attribute for EBGP neighborship, it should be directly connected. Example, if you see, this is over here is AS2 and the router three, this is on AS1. So we are making a neighborship between R3 and R3 and R5, as well as R1 and R5. But R3 and R1, they are on AS1. If you see, this is IBGP AS1 and this is on uh, AS2. So when we make a neighborship, what happens here, if I make a neighborship from, if you look at this two links that's running between R3 and R5, Ethernet 0 slash 1 and fast Ethernet 0 slash 4, that's a point to point connection, whereas I configured 50.0.0.1 over here and dot two on the point to point on R5. But for this, this is a directly connected, you can establish a EBGP neighborship. There is what, what about this uh, router ID 3? So we are using the loopback interface for it, right? So if you calculate the number of hop from R5 to reach the loopback address, that's actually in a different subnet. So it has to go through 50 network and then it it should hop back to uh, the loopback interface. So um, when you're making an EBGP between R3 and R5, you have to use a EBGP multi-hop because as per the, I mean, the criteria of EBGP neighborship is both should be directly connected. Whereas, but if you look at this 50.0.0.2 on R5, and this is configured on the physical interface that doesn't have, a, you know, um, yep, that doesn't have a, a direct connection to the loopback address. So to resolve this, we are going to use a EBGP multi-hop. So apparently this is a two-hop hobby. Since we discussed about uh, all this, you know, hops and uh, TTL, so we, we are very familiar with that. So in, in the security standpoint, if you want to implement something like this, you can also use a TTL security. Example, if you give TTL security of two, if there is a loopback that's hanging off on the R2, if it is trying to establish a connection, it's not going to happen because if you calculate uh, the TTL of two is for two hops from R5 to reach Router ID 3, that is loop back on R3. But whereas if I want to reach R, R2 and the loop back interface 2.2.2.2, I have to go through multiple hops. I mean, if you calculate it, it's more than two hops. If you calculate this from R5 to R2, there is more than two hops. If I make a TTL security of two right over here, then it is a problem for the R2 to reach here because uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm limiting my R5 to just the TTL value of two. So you cannot make an, an, an uh, you cannot establish a neighborship with someone who has uh, TTL more than two. If the hop count is more than two, you cannot uh, you know make a neighborship. So let me quickly take my pen to just explain you very quickly about that.
I think there is a glitch. Okay, so what I'm trying to say here, for if you look at this, this is of uh, TTL of, uh, so from R5 to this guy, between these two links, right? So between the 15 network, this is uh, TTL of one, but if I want to reach the router ID three loop back, so it, it, it should be TTL of two. So what I'm trying is if I'm trying to limit my router with the TTL security of two, if this guy over here, R2, if he's trying to establish a connection here, it you know it's not going to work because I'm limiting my TTL to two, but this is an use case I'm telling you. But what we are going to achieve in this lab is, we are going to do an EBGP multi-hop. And it should be directly connected. That's the condition of it, right? It should be, directly connected but if you actually see this uh, router ID 3.3.3 .3, this is not directly connected so I have to go through this actual physical link to reach this loopback interface so this is not directly connected for R5 so what we are going to how we are going to solve this problem we are using the EBGP multi-hop and I'll tell you in which uh, you know uses. I mean, in, in which particular scenario uh, this is very helpful. This is only applicable for EBGP neighborship. Um, example: If I want to give an use case here, so let's take this is an ISP here. The router five. This is an this guy is an ISP, and uh, these two are the customers routers. Called customer edge C router, and this is a provider edge, it's a P router, and you make a BGP, you make an EBGP. Yep. For the public uh, routable address, you have to use an EBGP. You cannot use an IBGP. So you're you're trying to establish an EBGP connection here. But if if this provider has to make a connection to your loopback interface, if that is a use case, if you want to make your neighborship with the loopback, because if uh, my actual connection goes down, still I have a redundant connection. If, if I take a different color, uh, that stands out. So, okay. So if you look at this, the blue lines following here, so I have a one more connection like this, right? So I can go to R3 over R1, I can reach R3. So if, if I make the loop back, if I make use of a loop back, even though if I lose a connection to this, I can still reach to this guy over router ID 3.3.3.3. So in this case, if, an, if, if, the, if the provider is, they are trying to establish a connection like this and they want to use a loop back interface, apparently, you know, you have to use an EBGP. It, it's a vice versa process. If, if you look at this, even in the EBGP on the, pro, this is a provider edge. And if you want to make appearing over your loopback address, you can still use this with the EBGP multi-hop. So that's why, that, that is what we are trying to achieve here. So what if here, so coming back to this uh, route reflector. So this guy you over here, the R4. So we made an IBGP. So what is the condition of IBGP? So why do we use an IBGP? We know that and we did that. So we use the local preference here, right? So if this is a transit router, this is my transit point for R1. So you guys know about transit point, right? So my traffic is you are intended and you are designing your network. And for that, your actual traffic should always go to this transit point. Let me take a different color. That makes 
that should stand out. Okay. So this guy over here, his transit point, right? So it, for, for to reach R2, even for R3, that if the transit point is R4, if I say transit point, even though this device is directly connected and it is just one hop away, but if I made this as a transit point, this can be my core switch, right? This is how you design and it can be your hub. In any case, if you make this as a transit point, so all my router has to go through this particular router to the other devices. You have a design as such like your DMVPN. So when you are deal with those, uh, you know, design principles, you know, we use, we use the local preference, right? We use the local preference. So what we did, so we advertised the highest local preference and this is only applicable for IBGP. So the router with the highest local preference is preferred and we are doing this as per neighbor relationship. So this guy is going to advertise this. The local preference is 200. So by default, the all the other link has a local preference of 100. And uh, this is purely based on the AS number, right? So for all the AS1, the local preference is 200. And this guy over here, R4, is advertising this uh, local preference 200 for all the devices. So for all the rest, I mean, all the other links, the local preference is 100. So apparently my transit point becomes an R4. That's what we try, we achieved in the last lab. So here there is a use case. So you they, they are telling that, okay, you have to come up with a plan. So I, I it's a pain. I, I mean, I got you know, one transit router and I want to establish multiple routers. Example, uh, if you use your SD-WAN, Right, this is this is your SD WAN hub device, and this is all your spoke devices. What if if you got example, you got thirty spoke devices, the spoke, this is your spoke. So what if you have thirty spoke devices? So you cannot do a IBGP. So as I said, for the IBGP, what is the criteria? You should have a route to it for all the devices. You have to have a route and you can use your loopback interface because uh, because the, the basic criteria of IBGP is it should be a full mesh. So in this case, if you see the, you know, the, if, if you see the challenge for the R4 to connect to R3, it doesn't have a direct link. So there is a only way to make an IBGP to this guy. To make an IBGP, I have to definitely use a loopback. So I, I can't do this loopback. So logically, I'm making a connection to this guy. So what if this is a pain? So if every single device I have to go and I have to you know uh, make a pairing with my source loopback and I, it has to be done on the neighbor devices. But instead, but instead, if I have a quick solution, a better solution to overcome this problem, that is the use of a route reflector. So what route reflector does? So if you look at this, so instead of using the loopback address to peer with my neighbor, so I'm going to say, um, this is my route reflector client. All these guys, right? From R4, my R2 is a route reflector client and this R1 is a route reflector client. So what happens here, even though if I am not making a neighborship with that? So think about this, guys, because see, the whole point of the IBGP is, it is based on the split horizon rule. So whatever the R2 is telling this guy, uh, let me use a different color that that's again, will stand out better. So whatever this guy R2 is advertising to this guy, this R4 will not advertise this back to R1 because of split horizon rule. So to overcome this problem, I, ca I can use two solution. To overcome the split horizon problem, I can use two solutions here. One is using the, let me erase this. 
let me use the for for the split horizon problem you can use loopback interface or else you can use route reflector So you can use two solutions. So we saw that, and so far we are dealing with uh, loopback interfaces to overcome this problem, split horizon problem in BTP. It should be full mesh. So instead, we are doing a route reflector here. So I am making this guy R2 for R4. Uh, you, are, you are my route reflector client, and you are my route reflector client. And let's see if we, if I can still establish a connection. So when I uh, draw a quick line between this. So these two guys are my route reflectors. And over here, I'm, I'm making an EVGP connection. And we are going to see using the multi hop and without the multi hop command, do I establish a connection? We'll see this in action. So this is the whole objective of this lab. So we are going to do the IBGP pairing with the route reflector. And along with that, we are establishing an EBGP for the loopback interface. That's something we haven't done that in the last lab. The whole point is, okay, if it is a directly connected, I can establish a connection. If it is not a directly connected, so how I'm going to overcome the problem? And what is the, what is the you know configuration changes I have to do to establish a connection with my neighbor if he is more than one hop away. So now let's uh, jump into the lab. So I'm on R1 over here, router ID 1.1.1. .1 .1. I give show run. Section BGP. So I'm going to remove all the BGP config here. R1. Let me go and uh, remove the BGP config on R2. Okay, show run section BGP. So I'm going to remove the BGP config on R3. R4. Sorry, R1. <clears throat> no BGP config. On R1, this is actually an R1 guy here. So I have a two console for it. Let me quickly check the config show IP interface brief. There's no config, so I got fast Ethernet zero slash zero zero slash one. Okay.
so this is 20 0, 0, 3. so this is an r1 this guy and r4 this is an r4 Post ethernet 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1 i think uh, the config changed let me make this an host name r4 Oh, here's this guy, R4. So, okay, let me see, show CDP neighbors. Give show IP interface brief. Config interface range. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. I'm an R4, so the route rate is 4.4.4. .4 .4. 0 slash 1. Shut. CDP neighbor, CDP neighbor, CDP. Okay, so I don't have an IP config here. Let me quickly do the IP config. So IP interface brief, exclude unassigned config interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 that's going to r2 and an ip address 30.0.0.1 ip interface brief include unassigned so this is 3001. So here is 3002. So let me copy this. So for this is for 30 network, yeah. So this fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and this is 30.0.0.1 over here on R2. So I'm going to R2, I'm, I'll jump back again to R4. And over here, this is 30.0.0.2. And it is uh, subnet mask is slash 24, 255, 255, 255, 0. No shut. Interface fast Ethernet. So now the I, I'm going to configure the link which goes to R1 over there. It's fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. IP address 40.0.0.1. Two fifty five, two fifty five, two fifty five zero. No shut. Do show CDP neighbors. Okay, I see R one over there. Fast Ethernet zero slash zero. It's showing us an R two. This guy. And over fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, I can see an R1. So my IP connection seems to be good. Let me check. So IP interface brief, exclude and assigned. Can I ping 30.0.0.1? Can I ping 40.0.0.1? I can ping, so my neighborship is good. So I'm going for an BGP config. Just one minute, guys. Let me do this. Okay. So I, I'm going to use a route reflector. So first I, I have to do a BGP. So router BGP one. My neighbor is 2.2.2.2. .2 I have to create a loopback interface. The interface loopback because he's using we are using the loopback interface for pairing everything. So interface loopback zero, IP address 4.4.4, .4 .4 .4. Two fifty five, two fifty five. It's done. So I'm going to BGP config on R four router BGP one. Neighbor two dot two dot two. 
update source before that i have to give an ASA number so remote as one neighbor 2.2.2 .2 update source loopback zero okay we, we are we are doing it a router of degree sorry for that so 2.2.2 .2 .2. Give a route lift reflector client. So this this connection is going here. I am doing a route reflector for this guy R2 as well as for R1. RR stands for route reflector. I'm doing route reflector client. And the same thing. So I want to make an EBG, IBGP neighborship with uh, R1 over here. Neighbor. 1.1.1 route remote is one neighbor 1.1.1 route reflector client 1.1.1 update source loop back zero Then uh, router PGP router ID the loopback interface of it my router ID 4.4.4 .4 which will show IP PGP show one section PGP. So I made a neighborship with this guy. Okay. To remove this. We are not using, sorry for that. We are not using the loopback interface to make a neighborship. No neighbor update source loopback zero. Okay, I didn't make a neighborship for that. I gave show IP. IP PGP. You know, guys, why I don't see a neighborship? You guys can ping me in the comment why we cannot do that. If you see that I don't have a route for the loopback interface, so I, I'm trying to establish an IBGP connection here. It's totally expected for the BGP. And also, one more thing I have to check. I'll answer for that why we don't see this because apparently. To, if you want to see the BGP route, you should have a, you know, routes in the rib. If I don't have a rib, I cannot establish a connection, right? So I want to make a static route. If I want to go to uh, router 2, 2.2.2. .2 .2. Destination 2.55, 2.55, 2.55. My next stop from R4, my next stop is 30.0.0.1, right? My physical interface, I have to go through the physical interface for it. Same way for for my router one. 1.1.1, 1 .1 .1, all 255 specific slash 32. And uh, it is 40.0.0.2, the physical interface. So run section BGP config. So I want to I want to redistribute this route because uh, BGP doesn't know how to reach that. So I have to do redistribute connected. So IP BGP. If you look at this, this is not selected as a valid and best route. Still, show IP route. So I have a static route for one router one, as well as for router two. And I want to see for router one and router two. Yeah, for router one and router two, I have, but still I don't establish a connection. So we're going to troubleshoot why I cannot establish a connection. Show one section. BGP. So I made a neighborship. 
for all this and i re i'm redistributing the connected networks get the router id and i made a router reflector for these two guys so let's jump back to r2 and see what you can see in the bgp so ip bgp bgp is not active here so no bgp can fake show run section bgp config router before that i have to do this so ip interface prefix include unassigned so i have a loopback interface i have an ip communication that's good so let me try if i can reach from r2 i can reach 30.002 this guy r4 30.002 Cool. So I can establish a connection now. Can I ping the loopback 4.4.4 .4 .4 source loopback 0? I cannot. Apparently, I should not see the route for it. Thank you, show IP route. So I do have route for it. Okay, show run section route. So I have a route for R4 over 40.0.0.1 from R2. So I don't want this. So I want to remove this because this is going a longest path from R2. It's going to 40.0.0.1. I don't want that to happen for R4. So I'm going to remove that static route. No IP route 4.4.4. So I want to make a static route for IP route 4.4.4. All 255s. And my next hop would be from here, it is 30.002. Show run section BGP. Okay, we got a static route. We are now we are doing the BGP. So I'm an R2, router BGP1, IBGP, BGP, router ID, router ID, this router 2.2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2 .2. And my neighbor 4.4.4. .4 .4. To this guy, router ID 4, 4.4.4, 4, 4, 4. remote AS1, IBGP connection. Redistribute, connected. And then to show run section BGP. Redistribute, connected. So I made a neighborship with this guy. I don't want to do anything. So only here, this guy is in, is in the middle transit point between R2 and R1. This guy is not advertising this back. And so the whole A is, right? So for A is 1, for A is 1. So because of the split horizon rules, whatever this guy is advertising, this this guy is not going to advertise this back to R1. To overcome this problem, we are running only the route reflector on the transit router on the R4, not on the other routers without using the loopback interface. So if I give show IP interface, brief, exclude, unassigned, I see my loopback interface. I can figure my loopback, advertise my loopback. So I made a neighborship with this guy, 4.4.4. .4. Okay, so now let me go to R4 and see, show IP BGP. So if you see, now it is changed to valid and best route. So, so this is for four, this is for 30. But still, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm I not still seeing this 2.2.2. .2 Show run section PGP. 2.2.2, this is correct. Redistribute connected and jump back to R2. Show run section PGP. 
to distribute connected and made a neighborship with this guy. Can I ping for 4.4.4? source loop back zero I can ping did it clear IP BGP dot soft no IP BGP I have valid best route for this but it's not coming into the routing table of let's show IP route I have a route over this two. So one section PGP. Show IP PGP summary. That is still in idle state. It's not sending any packets if you see. It still stays down. We have to troubleshoot that first section PGP. R4. So I made a neighborship for R2, made it as a route reflector, as well as for I did the same thing for R1. What is the other challenge we have here? One dot one dot one two dot two dot two redistributor. I have an out ready advertised. I can ping, but still, why it's not coming up here? Show IP route. Show IP route BGP. Show IP BGP summary. It's active, but not sending any information. Let me check. The route for BGP one neighbor two or two or two. They said that should not happen. Update source loop back zero. Zero. If I go to R2, not for BGP one. Okay, so from R2, okay, got it. So I am on. Now I am on R2. My neighborship is up. So run section BGP. Show IP BGP summary. Active. So run. Try to jump back to R4. Okay. Got it. Okay, so um okay. So from here I'm trying to establish an IBGP. You know, the problem what we encountered so far. So I missed one thing here. So if you look at the R1, I'll show you. You guys will understand this. Your show bronze section BGP. So I'm not using a you know source loop back here. But the transit point router, it should have a loop back. So I missed that point. So only the pairing devices, right? Only the pairing devices, the, the transit device should have, should, you know, establish a connection over the loop back interface because it doesn't know how to reach here. But for R2 to establish, R2 to establish a neighborship with R4, if you see this, we are not making a neighborship with the loop back interface. Because this, we, we are running the route reflector on the transit point where you have to enable your 
route route reflectors as well as your loop back peering should be there on the you know transit router so our transit router here is an r4 so run section pgp if you look at this so i made a neighborship with the 1.1.1 and 2.2.2 .2 and i am using a source loop back zero and i am using route reflector client so because of that so i establish a connection to this guy So run section BGP. So R1 I don't have, I haven't configured anything on R1. So in R2, if you see, I haven't configured the loopback interface, but still it works because of the route reflector on the transfer device. That is my R4. So if I give show IP BGP, Clear IP BGP star soft. Ping 2.2.2 .2 source loop back zero. I can ping. As well as from R2 ping 4.4.4 source loop back zero. I can ping to IP BGP, the valid and best route is for this guy and 4.4, .4, I want the next hop is 4.4.4. .4. So we'll talk about the next hop. So, so far now we made a neighborship between R2 and R4. Let's jump back to R1, this guy, will establish a connection, show run section BGP. There's no BGP configuration here, configure. So run section BGP, sorry, show run. Oh, I'll, sorry for that. So IP interface brief, exclude unassigned. I have assigned an IP address on it. I am on R1, yep. Okay, so I'm going for PGP config. What about my route? Show run into route. So I have a route for R2. That's fine. It's going to 4001. That's good. So I for R4, I am going to 4001. Okay, correct. So I have a route. So only PGP part. I have to do it. So router BGP one. Neighbor. Uh, 4.4.4. .4 .4. Remote is one IBGP neighbor two dot two dot two. Yeah, both this guy R2. We we know the router ID, you can find it. Neighbor two dot two dot two. Remote AS one. Um or else show from run section BGP outro BGP one redistribute connected okay I have to give one more thing redistribute static R2 show run action BGP. You know what ha what's happening here? Redistribute connected will just advertise my loopback interfaces, but I have to advertise my static route as well. Yeah, I forgot that to do for PGP. Redistribute static. And to go do the same thing on R4, jump back to R4. Show run section BGP. Config. Router BGP one redistribute okay. redistribute static so IP BGP here we go so for um, for R one for R two if you guys have observed uh let me scroll back this 
from R4 I1 R4 to R2 if you see this rib is failing for it right R stands for say rib failure here the output because we haven't redistributed the static ground for the BGP it doesn't know how to reach there but still we have a route in the routing table and it worked but if you want a route to be in BGP, it should be a valid and best route. That's something we missed over here. Once we did this redistribute static, so now if you see, it became the valid and best route. So this is very important. You should always do that. And what are the key key values you should look at? I am on R4, the valid and best route. And if it says all zeros, right, right away when you run or any time in your production network, you give show IP BGP. So the all zeros, right? If you see all zeros in your next op, that's self-originated routes. So if you see this, show IP interface, brief, exclude, and assigned. And you have this loopback interface on your device. This is locally originated routes. That's very important. So this route is a foreign route coming from the other device. But if you see all zeros, that's the route that's, you know, local to the device. And it should be always a valid and best route to reach the destination for this. If you see this 30.0.0.1, this guy over here is my next hop. It's totally expected. So I, I'll tell you the next op scenario when I, we are talking about the EBGP, that's very important for it. So for now, we established a connection and uh, it became valid and based on. So what if, if I jump back to R1 and I see that, do I see any changes? So IPBGP. So for R2, it's a valid and best route and it's going through for it at 0.0.0.1. .0 and if you see show run section BGP, I'm not using a source loop back because this guy, right, due to the split horizon rule, he's blocking this traffic. Let me take a different color that stands out better. Okay. So this guy is advertising the routes to this guy to reach over here, but this guy knows about how to reach here, but because of the split horizon rule, he's not doing that, right? So what we did, as I said, you have to make a neighborship, the three key things. If you actually see this, let's jump back again to this because this is very, very important when you make a neighborship, where to apply the route restrictor, right? Section BGP. So I made a route reflector and I'm using a source loop back only on the transit router and not on the neighbor devices. Only on the transit device, you have to do that. And if you see this, the route reflector for uh, R1 and also for R2, I did a route reflector. And if you go back to R2, if you see the BGP config, that's different. Show run section BGP. So key things, you have to redistribute your connected routes. Also, you have to redistribute your static route because BGP is purely in unique cast. It is not like a dynamic routing protocol. So you should tell the BGP how to reach it. So for that, you need either a static route or either you have to do an OSPF as any other protocol. So based on that, I mean, the routes, whatever it learned through a different routing protocol, you have to you know, inject those routes to BGP to reach. So now we are using just, uh, you know, we, we are redistributing the connected networks and also we are redistributing the static routes because we are running a static routes between the devices. So that's a whole point of uh, route reflector, where to, where to apply and how we can make a neighborship. So you can also deploy the same thing. You can give a design principles when, when, we, when you're establishing an IBGP. So we come across all the different scenarios because of the split horizon rule, it's happening and we saw how to do that and which in you know, where you have to apply your route reflector is very important. So, and this is applicable only for IBGP. So next, we are going for an EBGP multi-hop. So for that, let me jump back to R5. So we we didn't we did, did this part. So we made an IBGP relationship between these two guys. And as I said, we did a route reflector. So R1 can talk to R2, R1 can reach R4 and R2. Now the split horizon rule has been you know, uh, sorted out. 
because of using the route reflector. Now let's jump back to R5. Show run section BGP. Okay, let's remove this BGP route from this. No router BGP two. This is on external BGP, right? This is on AS two. If you look at this, and these two guys, R three and R four, they are on they are on uh, AS one, but it, it is trying to establish a connection to the external BGP. So now I'm going to remove this route router BGP. Two. Show running section BGP. Show running into route. So I have a route for R three and R four. So IP interface brief exclude unassigned. So I have a loop back. So now let's do a BGP. So here I'm I'm running the eBGP router BGP two, not in the same autonomous system. So I'm making a neighborship with neighbor uh, three dot three dot three remote AS one. Yeah, this is an eBGP. And also, I have to jump back. Okay, no, I, I'll make a pairing with R1 as well because I am an R5. I want to make a pairing for R5. The neighbor 1.1.1 .1 .1, remote AS1. And I have to jump back again to R3. Show run section BGP. I don't have a BGP config on R3. Show IP interface brief, exclude unassigned. I have a loop back. I have an IP connectivity. Good. So let me try for 50.0.0.2. Let me give show IPR. I can see 50.0.0.2. That's expected. So I want to do only BGP. Uh, if I do ping, Five dog, five dog, five dog, five. I can ping because I have a static route into route. Five dot five dot five and go to this thing. Okay, I got a route. That's good. So only the BGP part we have to do it here. Show run section BGP config router BGP. This is on BGP one. Right, my remote autonomous system is two. The neighbor five dot five dot five. Remote is two. And let's jump back to R one here. Route ready one. Show run section BGP. Configure router BGP one. And my neighbor would be 5.5.5, remote AS2. Yeah. Not five. Thank you. Show IP BGP. Show IP BGP. I don't see the neighborship for it. Show IP BGP. I don't see the neighborship. Run section BGP. If I go to R5, I'm an R5 router BGP 2 neighbor 3.3.3 eBGP multi hop. As I said, I can give the hop count of 2. 
or I can give in a hop count of five. It depends on how many hops away. This is two hops away. So for uh, neighbor 1.1.1, .1 .1, ABGP multi hop of five. Show run section BGP. So I did a EBGP multi hop on R5. You show IP BGP. Still, I didn't establish a connection. You go to R3. Neighbor 5.5.5.5. EBGP multi hop of 5. Yeah, IP BGP is star soft. So IP BGP. Okay. You know why? Yeah, I know the answer why. Outer BGP one redistribute. Connected, redistribute static. To go to R5, drag outer BGP2, redistribute connected, redistribute static. Go to R1, run section BGP. Router BGP one neighbor five dot five dot five update source loop back zero neighbor five dot five dot five dot five BGP multi hop five so IP BGP So IPBGP summary still my neighborship is not happening for R5. Run section PGP. I redistributed show IP route. I have a static route for R5. No, show run include route. Okay. So I don't have a route for the loop back. I'm going to create a route from R1 to R5. 255, 255. So from R1, I want to go through the physical link 60.0.0.2. So IPBGP summary. So if I go back to R5, so run section route. So I have a route for router four, router three, but for uh, for this guy, I have a route over the 50.0.0.1 can I ping from R5 to R3 I can ping but I didn't do a source loop back on R5 if you look at this config I haven't made a neighborship with the loop back outer BGP2 So two neighbors, uh, one is from R5, 1.1.1.1, update, so slope back zero. And the neighbor three, 3.3.3.3. .3 .3 .3. 
update source to pack zero. So look at this because of that. No neighborship. Show IP BGP summary. So you see this. I'm receiving 11 prefixes. So what are the key values you should see here? I am receiving 11 prefixes from this neighbor 1.1.1 and uh, seven prefixes from this guy, seven networks, right? All the seven networks from this, I, and now I established a connection. So for the eBGP neighborship, what are the key things you should know about show run section BGP? So the criteria number one, the BGP, if it has to be in the valid and best rock, show IP BGP. If it, it should be always, should not be rip failure routes. It should be always your valid and best route. So for the valid and best route for, from R5, the valid and best route for R3. Yeah, it's 50.0.0.1 .0 because we have, we have a static route for it. So I have reachability. And also I should, if I, the very first command you should run always is show IPBGP summary. So you, you, your state should be actually an established state, right? So if you are not establishing connection, if it is still an active state, so your neighborship will never have happen. So only after this state, we have seen this, we'll see this open messages and we have seen, you know, what are the key values we have seen. Now we will do a capture and we'll see the, you know, information, what it is going on between the eBGP neighborship. So here now we establish the eBGP. As I said, the condition, if you see, show run, uh, let me let me do a trace rock, trace rock, trace rock 3.3.3. .3. I have to go one more thing. I failed to do that. I have to give, I have to do a trace rock from my source. 5.5.5. This is, you know, when you are just doing a trace route for 3.3.3, it's going to use your exit interface. So here it, it will use 50.0.0.2. .0 .0 .0 it, it, it always happens. So. Source, loopback, zero. So it is going through 50.0.0.1 to reach there. And I have a route. So EBGP is established. So now uh, the other thing here, I will draw a line. For this guy, right? For this guy, he's, we establish an EBGP with this guy. Yeah. And I'll take a different color, makes a stand out. So here we are running IBGP. Let me grab my pen. So here we are running IBGP. Here we are running EBGP using the multi hop. You are establishing a neighborship over the loopback interface from and to the loopback interface, right? So until this point, you have an EBGP neighborship. But for this guy, if he is trying to reach to R4, your next stop should be, you know, what happens there. Let me show you the routing table of it. I'm on R5. It gives show IP BGP. If I check for uh, R2, what is that it's it showing here? It's a 1.1.1. My next stop is this guy. So if 
uh, from R5, yeah, from R5, I'm, if I want to reach R4, my next hop is 50.0.0.1. This is fine. We we have a static route. So we'll take this scenario. So it is the link for to R2, from R5 to R2, my next hop, it is showing 1.1.1.1. Right, but how this guy R5 can reach 1.1.1.1? Does he has an pairing with this guy? So run section BGP. So I made a neighborship only for one and three, and not for this guy R4. What if if I try to do that? For this guy, for AS2, for AS1 is a remote network, right? Sorry, remote autonomous number system from, from the BGP standpoint. Yeah. Section BGP. Config. Router BGP2. So I'll make a neighborship for R4, for R4, R4, remote AS1, for R4, R4, update source to pack zero. I have to go to R4, this guy over here, show and section BGP. So I want to make a neighborship for R5. Router BGP one. Neighbor fire or fire or five. Remote A is two. Yeah, this this A is is two for R5. Neighbor five dot five dot five. Update source loop back. Source loop back zero. And then the very first thing I have to check is my routing table for that. Include route. So I don't have a route for R5. IP route. Fire, fire, five, all to 55. My next stop would be from R4 for the main, my next stop would be 40.0.0.2, right? If you look at this, 40, one, two. 40, 0, 0, 1. Oh, sorry, 40.0.0.2 itself. So it is 40.0.0.2. My next stop from this guy, 40.0.0.0 is my next stop. So from R5, why do I have it out for it? So IP BGP summary. Still for R4, I am not establishing a connection. So um, include route. So for R4, I have a route 50.0.0.1. And the transit point for R4 and for from R5, the transit point is R1. For R4, the transit point is R1. So this guy should know about R4 and R5, right? So I have to jump into R4, R1, sorry, here. Show run section BGP. So I made a neighborship with R4 and R5. But for R4, okay, we are using route reflector, IPGP, so I didn't use that. What about my routes? Show sure, and include route. So for R5, I'm going to 60.0.0.2 right over here. And for R4, I have a route for 40.0.0.1. So let me go back here. Show run section 
PGP. So I am trying to establish uh, for R4. I didn't do a EBGP multi hop. It's more than one hop from me. It should be directly connected. That's a condition. Outer PGP two neighbor four or four or four. EBGP multi hop five. If we go back to R4, show run section BGP. So this is a remote autonomous number system. I want to establish a connection. It's not a directly connected. I have to use some EBGP multi hop because it, it has a multi hop to reach it, not on one hop I can reach. It should be directly connected. Same condition apply everywhere. So router BGP1. Neighbor five or five or five. EBGP multi hop five. So if you'll see this, once I give this command, my BGP came up. So IP BGP. So from this guy, R5, right? Yeah, I got a neighborship now. So your EBGP multi hop is very very important if when you establish a EBGP and if it is not directly connected, you are making a neighborship with a loopback interface or anything, right? So say right from here, this guy is not directly connected. I have to go through this. So I made it EBGP multi hop. Of I I gave a hop count of five. So from here, one. From loopback one, then from physical interface two three, four, it's four hop away. So EBGP multi hop is very, very important for your neighborship. And uh, we're talking about the next hop self. So if I give show IP BGP. So for 4.4.4.4, my next hop is 50.0.0.1. Where is it? This guy. It's showing here. Two, oh, sorry for that. I mean, uh, we, we are looking for a route for four. Here, the valid and best route is 50.0.0.1. Okay, it's showing 50.0.0.1. So, front section BGP. So, for this four network, is it? Well, let me give a trace route. Where actually it's going into trace route? So I'm trying to find here yeah, how, how I'm going to R4. So where is my static route from R4 to R5 to R4? So um, include route. So for this guy, okay, I gave 5001. Oh, okay. It should be actually 60.0.0.1, right? So if you look at this this link, okay. So I gave this and it is going through that. You gave it trace route. So this is how you have to check your routing tables and your routes to ensure that how exactly you, you, your transit point is something you have to decide. You can design an update based on that. Trace route source, look back, zero. I'm trying to find from R5 how I'm reaching R4 based on the static route. I want to see the, you know, the routers it is traversing through to reach 4.4.4. Okay, since I gave 50.0.0.1, thus it takes the static route and it's going there. Right over here, from here it went here. Then it went to 10.0.0.1. As you see, this is going to a different AS number, right? AS1. And then again, it's coming back that is 002 and it's reaching here. So this is taking this path. So if you want to do your traffic re-engineering, if you want a shortest path, if you look at this, this is the longest path. If you want to do a traffic engineering, you can actually change your route. 
to the sky. From R5, you see issue, run, action, PGP. IP PGP. I want to see for R4, it's 50001. So this is for R4, this is the valid and best route, 50001, so over here. If we come back to R4, so IPPGP. And if I see for R5, where in best route is, I'm going to 40.0.0.2. I'm going to change this. I want the, you know, shortest is here. I mean, we, we are using just A is one and two. I want to take a uh, you know, shortest path. So this is four hops away. Let's see if I can manipulate the wrong. Show run section, PGP. Show run include route. Config. 4.4.4. That may remove this wrong. Instead, I'll give four or four or four. I'll give six three zero zero one. So IPBGP. So for the four network, it is going to 60.001. If you see here, I made the shortest path here using the static route. So if I give trace route, so four or four or four. From R5, I'm, I'm trying to find a hop what it takes now. It's coming to this 60001. Come on, okay. It's coming here. And over here. If you look the trace route output, uh, where is this trace route? Okay. So if you, if you see this, it took three hops to reach there, but here in just two hops, I can reach to this guy. And this guy, he, he is on AS1, it is telling that. Now let's take a packet capture and see. So a quick recap what we did. And uh, I'm telling you guys this, if you understand this, EBGP and IBGP and uh, the route reflectors, how to establish this connection. See, your, your core fundamental of establishing your BGP, you are playing with your attributes, you are doing your re-engineering. Believe me, the IBGP and EBGP neighborship is a solid foundation for your BGP. If you guys are not doing this, you cannot play around with your attributes. So I have seen this in many scenarios. Even I had you know, struggled a lot when I'm doing this, labbing it. And when I did a multiple topologies, so I have gone, gone through a lot of problems. So every single detail is very, very important in your BGP. It is not like OSP for EAG or you're just using the network commands. You can redistribute and your neighborship will happen. No, BGP is a bit more complex protocol. And you know that this very the first protocol when compared to 
your EAGRP and OSPF because you have a lot more attributes. But believe me, again, I'm telling you, if you are, if you are fundamentally very good with this lab, you can build other attributes because I'll tell you, you play around with your multiple attributes. What if, if you don't know how exactly the IBGP and EBGP work and what is the use of uh, doing all these attributes? I, I would say a specific thing, not the use of, I mean, you, you will be uh, lost sometimes when, when you're troubleshooting your BGP. So the core fundamental is we have to go through the same troubleshooting procedures and uh, you should know, you know, what is the use of next stop? We have seen how we can manipulate the next stop re-engineering, how you can do and you can manipulate your routes in BGP. So before that, the very first thing is how you are making a neighborship. So from R4 to R2, it is an IBGP and R4 to R1, it is an IBGP. And as I said, due to the split horizon rule, this route is not advertised in IBGP. That's the nature of IBGP. So to overcome this problem, we can use either the source loopback, sorry, we can use, uh, yeah, we can use the uh, loopback interfaces to make a neighborship because it has to be directly connected. That's practically not possible because a network that is on, uh, you know, on R1, it is not a directly connected to this guy. Only have, I, I, I have one cable running to R1. I cannot run multiple cables to it. That's not a feasible solution. So to overcome this problem, I am making a logical neighborship. So for that, you have to use your BGP router ID along with your loopback interfaces. You are making your pairing with the loopback. And uh, as I said, where it is exactly use the route reflector, you just imagine I got R2 and R1. What if, if I, this is a hub, sd one hub, and you got 120 sites, you, you have 500 sites. The principle is same. So all you are going to do is you are making in BGP neighborship using the loopback interface only on the hub devices and not on the spoke. All I'm going to do is I'm using the route reflector. So the route reflector, what happens? It reflects the routes, what it learned from R1 to R2 and what it learned from R2, it reflects back to R1. So it generally is the throwing out the network, throwing out the network to all the neighbors whomsoever it's configured. So this route reflector attributes very, very, you know, this is the best practice. And I mean, I would not say the best practice, the very feasible solution for the SD-WAN problem for IBGPs. You, you have, you know, 50 sites in your data center. And if you want to make a neighborship with every device, just think about that. You have to use a, so you have to make a neighborship with a loopback. That's very, very, it's very, uh, you know, time consumption process and it's not a feasible solution. The smart way of doing it is you can use your route reflector. So where you have to use the route reflector, this is a scenario as I told you, like your SD-WAN with multiple spoke devices, you can use route reflectors. And coming back to the EBGP, as I said, EBGP condition is it should be directly connected. There is a one way to disable it. Disable directly connected uh, you know, criteria. That is not a feasible solution. You know what? Anybody can uh, make a neighborship with your device. That is a biggest security problem with that. So it is always suggested. And the best way of doing it is using the EBGP multi-hop command. So using that, you can make a neighborship with your devices. And if you see this, your next stop is very, very important. You have to check your you know, first, when, when you establish your connection, you have to give show IP BGP summary command to check is it do I really have a neighborship with that guy? Show IP BGP summary. This is the very first command before you run your IBGP summary. Sorry, your IBGP. Your IBGP will show you your BGP routing table. This is actually showing your TCP connection and it is completely in established state. I'm receiving all the PFX is, uh, for receiving the route. So, uh, you know, regardless of uh, the number of networks you are run, you, you're running on a router. So how you're going to see that? I mean, uh, do I see all the routes that's been thrown out from R4? Uh, yeah, from here, if you say this R1, so I'm throwing out, the R1 is throwing out 11 network informations to this guy R5. So I, do I receive all the prefixes? If you, are, if you are missing something, you can go check your advertisement. Yeah. So for R3, I'm receiving seven prefixes. For R4, I'm receiving 11 prefixes. Once this is done, you have to give this command. This is actually very important. Uh, so the key things you have to see here is my next hop is properly configured. I'm going to the shortest path. 
then it has to be valid and best path and it should not be uh, you know rib failure rib failure means that you do not have that trout in your routing table as i told you so ipbgp has its own routing table so ip route pgp so if you see all this b this is all this networks it's learned through bgp so if a valid and best route has to be here then you should have that route in your routing table so when i say routing table this is a generic routing table a common routing table so this routing table is only for bgp so always you should use show ip bgp and you have to ensure that your next stop value is properly you, you have a proper next stop to reach it yep that's very important so it has to take the shortest shortest path it 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 is not necessarily has to go through r3 r2 and reach r4 instead from r5 it is just three, three hop away so now let's do a packet capture and see the key details what we can see there for that let me go and uh, shut down this port interface fast ethernet zero slash sorry so ip interface brief exclude unassigned so let me go to router bgp sorry interface range fast ethernet one slash four to five one slash four hyphen five shut so i turned off this port that been down uh so let's go back to the capture i have to do a capture before doing this it's fine so i'm i'm, I'm you know capturing the traffic between r4 and r5 i want to see some ebgp packets So it's sending keeps keep alive packets. Are you alive? It's coming from R4 to R5. And R4 is uh, doing a retransmission to R5. It, it couldn't find it. Continues doing a retransmission. Now let's go back and uh, turn on and let's see what's let's keep sending keep alive now it's r1 sending back show ip bgp you see the keep alive show ip show ip bgp summary so all the neighbors right sending uh, keep alive and you see now r1 is sending a retransmission and four is sending back a retransmission to R5. So with the, we know that, we, we, we discuss this a lot. So you guys are very familiar, I'm very confident on that. The R4 is doing a retransmission to R5. Everything is doing to a retransmission to R5. So that proves that R5 is down, right? R5 is down, it's not responding back. We turned off the ports. So let's see what if, if I turn on the ports. Show IP interface brief exclude unassigned config. If you look at this, uh, my loopback is up, but still my physical interface is not up. Can see multiple notification message. The holder and timer expired. It's it's keep trying to establish a connection, or it send a notification. I cannot establish a connection with you anymore because the whole time whole time more expired. So if we go back to this, you can also see the same output here, but you don't see the retransmission or the detail. 
so if you if you look at this from from one device i can see the neighborship of all the devices right so talking to show locking come on to show locking let's see this let's do a, a debug debug ipbgp debug ipbgp events No route to peer, no route to peer, no route to peer. R1 is trying to send a sin. Okay, we know this, so we'll go back and see what is the other information we'll see when I do that show IP to face prefix cloud unassigned. Config interface range. Let me do do you all stop the debug. Config interface range. Fast Ethernet one slash four two five hyphen five. Oh shit. Neighbor status up. What else I can see here? The neighborship is up. Can see the R packets, SIN packet. So now, if you see the three way handshake happen, right? SIN, SIN, AC. AC between R5 and R4. So it's in an open message. So it is telling that my A's number is two, this guy, or five. The open message from source 4.4.4. .4 .4. BGP identifier, so that's why the BGP route rate is very important. So it's coming from AS1, right? The five. So if you see the AS number is two. In the update message, what should you see? You should see your NLRI information, network layer reachability information. So I am on R5. See, it learned about R4, R3, EBGP 60, 50, its own router ID with the subnet mask values. So I learned all this, right? So I know how to reach all this network. So if you're doing a troubleshooting and if you, if you are not finding any particular network over here, it's either a problem with that device, the remote device, it's not properly advertised. Yeah, if you can if you can reach the other networks example here in the three network if you're missing something in your NLRI so that's something in the three network you have to look into it your IBGP your network config your routes so now if you see a uh, three-way handshake happening right because the bit between these two guys R5 R4 Because we have an EBGP neighborship only with R4 and R5. So from this guy, it's showing that. So when you're troubleshooting, the very important parameter you have to look into is your NLRI information. How you reach your foreign networks. If you know the NLRI information network, layer reachability information only, then you can reach it. To, but to reach it, you should establish a successful three-way handshake, right? Conversation filter, TCP. 
see your three way handshake is successful between these two guys. You, you're making a EBGP neighborship. We have seen the ACE number. So everything line by line you can check. And if something missing, you can check what has to be done and you can troubleshoot. This is give, this will give you a lot more detail, right? So the whole objective of this lab, and I believe that everybody, you know, um, feel worth about it because we discussed a lot here. We discussed about route reflector. We discussed about EBGP neighborship, and we discussed about the use of next stop self. Way how how you know you can change your next stop based on your routing, and uh, we have gone through how to check. You know the key values you have to check. when you're troubleshooting it. So now if you see my neighborship is up and running for all this networks. The same network in the open messages you should see, right? I mean, the update messages in the NLRI, what is the same, uh, no neighborship, whatever you have here, you should see the neighborship, right? This is coming from R5 source. So this is how, if you have your perfect neighborship, this is how you can do it. You can definitely play around this in this lab. This will definitely give you, you know, a complete insight. And uh, you can master your BGP skills for sure, if you do this. And also we discussed about um, the the AS path the you know mul uh, we we made a neighborship between um uh, you know uh, IBGP and EBGP then we did an AS path uh, sorry not AS path preference we did a local preference and the local preference is again uh, it is used only for IBGP as I told you um, the best practice of uh, local preference as I said if this is a transit point again for R two and R one if it's a transit point for R2 and R1, so if you have the highest local preferences, you, you're, you're you know throwing the highest local preference out to R2 and R1. So this guy will not take this R5, R3, and R2. Instead, he will take R4 to reach R2 if it is a core device and if you have a redundant device. So example, if you see this, uh, this is your uh, core switch primary and secondary example primary and this is your secondary and if you have the highest local preference always all the devices in your network right so it, it has to go through this to reach out to any foreign network because you, you your core switch primary switch should always have should have the highest local preference and this guy should have a you know the uh, least local preference compared to your your uh, primary uh, core switch if it is going to your isp like this yeah so your transit path always from any router your transit path to be this guy so if if that should happen then you should have the high, highest local preference here and through ibgp your highest local preference you know the devices through through your neighborship you can throw out your highest local preference so all these devices it will come to you to reach any other device that's the best practice right because there's a Code switch where you you are you know all your VLANs hanging off on this device, and it has to go to this device. And if this device fails, only then this device has to take a role of primary, and it should be a transit device. Okay, fine. So uh, that's it really about BGP, the best practices, and uh, I would suggest everybody to do this lab. Now let me stop this recording.